All right, let's go ahead and um, open with a brief uh, word of prayer. And if you need to confess, you can do that. I'll give you a little bit of time for that. And then we'll um, get going. So let's pray. Dear Father, we just uh, thank you so much uh, for this very specific amount of time that uh, you give us to not only learn and, and teach your word, but also to uh, live in a way that's satisfying to you according to your will. We just pray this second session that we can uh, see the word in ways that uh, change our thinking such that we change our lives. And we thank you so much for that ability. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So, here we are talking about God's perfect plan, uh, His perfect will, or this says His perfect way, which actually means every decision uh, that He makes is perfect because if you have a way, that way has point, point, always points back to those decisions that made your way. And I think that definitely says something about God because His way has been perfect and has been flawless. So this is um, what we're talking about. And uh, we need to understand that part of the sovereignty of God means that nothing can happen to you as a believer without God's permission, without God's permission. Whether it be famine, whether it be violence, whether it be something happening in your personal life, it has been God allowed or directly uh, um, take an action caused by God on His behalf. So we need to remember that, that God definitely is in the workflow of what happens in your life. Things just don't happen by random chance or are overbearing or too out of whack as far as timing is concerned. These things have all been regulated, have all been pre-thought of, and are, there's a plan, right? It's like a record player playing, is that what I associate it to. Nothing is new to God. These things are planned accordingly. And um, even though we may be surprised, God is not. So when we pray, we need to pray with confidence. God knew what was going to happen before it happened. And therefore we can pray in such a way that uh, uh, he, he understands what we're, what we're dealing with. Now, the reason I say that because uh, that really defines, you know, or at least partially defines total control of, of what God allows and, and fully controls on this earth. Now, on the flip side of that, God is not a dictator. He's not a dictator, right? We know that there's dictatorships in other places around the world, and we see the results of that. God will not force you because he does not want to take away your freedoms. A dictatorship takes away freedoms, right? It does. He gives us full-blown freedom of choice and allows us to choose which direction and destiny we want to go in this life. And I know I mentioned that, but that's such an important concept when you're talking about God's way and His perfection. Because that's the direction we would like to go. And we all desire to go as believers. I'm talking about your individual lives, your way, your plan, what you have in store for your, yourself as an individual. If we're not in line with the perfect way, what way are we aligned with? That's a, a question I think we all should ask ourselves. But part of this has to do with God graciously giving us the options to choose the right way. And, you know, we, we wake up every day, we do have options, but we also have to relate those options with the sovereignty of God. Because there is an ultimate way, and there is an ultimate way in your personal life that must align with God's way. And so we have to make decisions that I think are, are completely uh, in line with that. So... So God wants you to enjoy that freedom. And that's why we choose the way, His way. So we can enjoy that freedom spiritually, not only spiritually and personally, but also a as a country, right? Those things spread to blessings by association to other people. And uh, God honors that. And so it's not just about your personal life. It's about the plan of God 
as a body of Christ that we're uh, a part of here. So uh, if God didn't allow us to choose, uh, like I said earlier, that would um, go against his perfect um, essence. So he's not going to do it. Now, um, that goes to say we do have problems in our lives and, and things that where we feel like God is not in control. When we look to the problems of life and we see things like anger, depression, relationship issues, all these things, we have a tendency to look at God and not sin as the result. But we've already talked about that, that His ways are blameless. So when there is a hiccup in our own personal life, we can immediately look to ourselves to make those adjustments needed to be able to deal with what God has actually allowed to happen in our lives. Just because it's a bad thing doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Right? It all, there's always benefits in everything that happens in your life. You may not see them, but it means that you need to be able to be in a divine position to be able to see them. If we can't see benefit in something, there's something not working right within our soul. There's benefit everywhere in your life, no matter what. So, um, and I, I was reminded as I was looking at this study, I was reminded that uh, we do have a form, or actually it's a statue, it's called Lady of Justice, and she's holding her, uh, her scales in one hand. And you know, that's supposed to be a form of to show equality, to show that justice is fair across the board. Now, is that reality? No. But that's the point. That's the idea. So there's always a fairness associated with God's plan. There's a fairness across the board towards people. His justice is perfectly fair, and therefore His will and His ways are fair as well. Although sometimes, you know, you see that, it's hard to translate that in your own mind. How can that be fair? Well, I can't explain the details, but what I can tell you is what His Word tells us. And if His Word tells us His ways are blameless, His ways are just, we can actually make that connection ourselves, that there is a perfect, just God who is in control. And that's a good thing, right? Because we know that there is an unjust uh, lead of our country that's actually we're witnessing right now, and we see the results of that. So thankfully, God can contradict that in, in total. So, uh, so His justice is perfectly in line with His sovereignty. Now, I want to look at a couple of examples of from the Scripture where, because it's no secret that God uses evil for His good. You know, and I enjoy seeing those scenarios because when you're in the moment and you're seeing the evil that seems to be moving in the direction of their plans, they seem to be fulfilling those plans, it's good to see examples where those plans don't, aren't getting fulfilled. And one of those places, as we've already studied, is the Pharaoh and the plagues. Not too long ago we studied that, right? We saw how God used Pharaoh's hardened heart, which it was hardened, rejecting God, to free the Jews. Now think about that. Using someone who completely rejected God, using that evil, that hardness of heart, that sin and rejection of Him, to actually fulfill His will and His plan. Now, that's an hard to understand because, you know, we can instantly blame God for Pharaoh's actions. But that's not the case. God can use those bad actions and those bad decisions for His good and glory. There's a difference. God is not responsible for the sin, but He will use it to His advantage, no doubt. And that shows the omnipotence and the sovereignty of God coming together. Because Pharaoh was a, the most powerful person around. And it shows that even though people have human power, God is still in perfect control. Romans 9, 17 says this, for the scriptures say it, says to Pharaoh, for this, for this very purpose I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. So God had plans. God had plans. Not only did He wanted, want us to see His power in an evil ruler, which I think we're, he, he's doing today as well. He wants us to see his power in the corruption. He wants us to see his power in all the bad things that are happening, not according to their, their will, but according to his will. 
because he's superseding these things uh, that are taking place. So despite the fact that Pharaoh was evil and continued to sin, God used that. But that doesn't make God guilty. Doesn't make God guilty. Far from it, actually. So uh, he's in a different position. Now, another great example of this, um, actually, do you see the second part of this? Not only did he want to demonstrate his power, but he wanted to uh, proclaim his name. He wanted to make himself known, which happens many times when people have some kind of great revival is there's something that happens or shakes a country and then all of a sudden they turn back to God. See what happens from the adversity and the calamity is that God, God's name is proclaimed throughout uh, the whole earth, basically, right? And that's what he did there and that's what he continually does, even what we see today. So another example of this is, uh, what about Joseph? You know, I thought about Joseph's life. I was thinking, man, that guy had a rough life. At least part, some of it, right? We know some of the things he went through. Um, his brothers hated him. You know, a lot of us deal with rejection at some point or another. But when you have a group of people that you have to live with that hate you, that's a hard, probably a very hard test to pass. All of his brothers hated him. Why? They were jealous. He was favored by his father. They hated him, right? They rejected him. On top of that, they wanted to kill him. At least one of them did. Luckily, another brother talked him out of that, but the reality is he could have died in the well they threw him in. They decided to throw him in a well instead. They didn't kill him. On top of that, they decided to sell him as a slave to the Egyptians. Now think about all these thing, bad things happening in your life. All your brothers hate you. They're trying to kill you. You have to go to sleep at night with these people. They, you know, I mean, they throw you down a well. They're selling you into slavery. They're lying to their father about you. Your image, your reputation is right down the drain with people, with your family, with everyone. And how are you supposed to deal with that, right? Uh, what, how, what happened next? Well, he, he was sold into slavery and he started to begin working for Potiphar's, or for Potiphar, right? Well, he's not out of the woods yet. Because what happens next is Potiphar's wife claimed that he was trying to sleep with her. And because she was upset that Joseph didn't want to have anything to do with her, at least sexually, right? And then all of a sudden, what is that? Injustice. Well, of course, Potiphar said guilty as charged and sent him to prison. Now he's in prison. Now, on top of all these things that are happening in his life, you would think someone would start to lose faith over time, not Joseph. He didn't lose faith. You and I may have lost faith. Joseph didn't lose faith. And that just goes to show the power of God in someone's life when they're trusting in the one who is in control. Joseph could have easily said, you know what? These people are in control of my life. That's it. It's done. I'm in slavery. My whole life is turned around. I'm away from my family. I'm away from where I live. And now I thought I was out of the woods and I'm in prison. You can really turn south as far as your application is concerned in your own personal life. Joseph didn't do it. So w what happens next is, remember he met the cupbearer and the baker in the prison. He interpreted their dreams, right? And one of them was going to be executed. The other one, I think it was the cupbearer, was getting out of prison. So what did Joseph do? He said, hey, would you remember me when you get out of prison with the Pharaoh? Mention my name so I could get out of here. Uh, well, what does it say in the verse? Did the cup bearer remember him? It says in Genesis 40, 23, yet the chief cup bearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. That's what it says. Now, how many times has this happened in your life? I'm not saying you're in prison and someone forgets about you, but someone forgets something and it affects what happens in your life. 
Look how easy it could have been for Joseph to look to the cupbearer and blame the cupbearer. It's his fault I'm still in here. But guess what? He, he could have got out a lot sooner out of jail, but he didn't. He actually stayed there for two years after that point. That is a long time to be in prison. That's a long time. Joseph could have been one of those really angry people that were blaming God. How could you do this, God? I'm so faithful to you. My brothers hated me. They threw me down. And here I am in prison. I'm just sitting here left to rot. He's a great example to show us that if we look to the circumstances in whatever we're in, we are not looking to the solution. That, that's a, just a, the, the plain application because Joseph did not look. I'm sure he, he's human, right? He went back and forth, I'm sure. But overall, we can say he was faithful. He remained faithful to God. So he stayed in prison those two years. And all these evil things were happening. And he could have easily blamed a number of people. He could have blamed his brothers. He could have blamed Potiphar's wife. She was directly responsible for the injustice that he caused. But see, there's a level above the sovereignty of God. There's a plan that is taking place for Joseph's specific life that God is setting him up for that he's actually prospering in every one of these situations he's in. You know what happened when he was in prison? You know what happened when he was in Potiphar's house? Potiphar turned over full control to him. He prospered there. Well, then you think he shot down, he went in prison. Oh, no, you can't do anything there. The jailer gave Joseph full control to run the prison. He's prospering everywhere he goes because God is showing him who's in control. Guess what? If you're taken captive, if you're kidnapped, if your house is broken into, God is in full control. No matter where we go physically, doesn't matter. That, does, that part doesn't matter. What matters is that God is in control within those places. Just like he was in prison. Guess what? All of a sudden, Joseph went from a prisoner and a bad guy to a good guy and a guy in charge of the prison. Most likely speaking about God. So, and remember what happened next in all this. Um, after Joseph got out of prison, he went back to, of course, working for the Pharaoh. And he was in a, uh, remember, the highest ranking position. And... Remember, he finally identified himself because there was a famine taking place and his brothers were there to get food. All of his family came. His brothers were there to get food. And Joseph was the one that was handing out the food. He recognized them. They didn't recognize him. He finally told them who he was. Do you remember that? He explained to them who he was. And here's the verse. Now, at this point, you and I, we would have had plenty of reason to do whatever we want to those brothers. We would have said, we need to get these guys arrested. We, he could have said, we need to put them to death. They tried to kill me. He could have said, we need to put them in hard labor. They gave me hell while I was a, a, a youth. He could have said anything he wanted to. But what did he say? Genesis 45, 8. He says, now therefore, it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his household and the ruler over all the land of Egypt. That's what he told him. I mean, look how easy it would have been to look at the negative, to look at what happened in the negative. And when we look to the negative, things don't get better. Joseph could have made his situation worse if he wouldn't have applied God's word to his life. God gives us options even within those situations. Remember, Joseph is choosing his own destiny. God is in control of that destiny. He could have misapplied God's word right from the get-go and made bad decisions and not been in the position he's in there. But he knew it wasn't him or his brothers who sent him there because you can tell he's still applying the word of God here. He's trusting He's saying, it was God who sent me here. Despite all these bad things, I may have bumped my head. I may have been hurt. I may have been in some pain. But God was directing me exactly where he wanted me to be. There's a plan. There's a path for you as an individual that God wants to take you to. And you might get thrown down a well. You, you, your brothers and sisters might hate you. Your family might hate you. 
People might be a problem, a thorn in your side. You might have a lot of issues, but God is moving those pieces. And he, if He's going to move them in a way that is in line with where He wants you to go. And it's no different. We're seeing here in Joseph exactly the same. But at the end of the day, look who we need to look to to apply correctly, not the circumstance. The circumstances are not even an issue as far as anything happening in our lives. The issue is what is God doing in those circumstances? That's, that's the issue. So, you know, you would think, man, Joseph really could have laid it on him, but, but he didn't. Uh, and you can tell by his response. You know what else he understood here? He understood grace. He understood grace. Because he, he, he was so justified in getting revenge right here. But he knew that he had a Redeemer that had saved, had, he had been saved on his behalf. Therefore, he understood that grace and he applied it to his brothers. I know most people wouldn't have done that, even most believers, right? But Joseph did it, especially all what he'd, he'd suffered. So, um, so we need to understand that God is in charge no matter what. That's, that's one thing. And we also need to understand the grace of God applies in every one of those situations. Every one of them. Because if you're not applying the word, there's no way you're going to answer the people that have done these things to you in the way Joseph did. You can't do it. You're going to be angry. You're going to be upset. You're going to wish your life had gone a different direction. You're going to, you're going to want revenge. You're going to be bitter. See the idea? You're going to gossip about people because you're not happy about a certain situation. Well, that's not applying the word here. That, that's not applying God's word to circumstances. Joseph, it kind of reminds me, you know, he kind of, he kind of got hunkered down and he just went through. He went through. He trusted in God and he just kept going, right? He kept going and he came out on the other side unscathed is what happened. God is going to get you to that point. But if we're not willing and we're not wanting to be to that point, he'll allow you to do that too. God's way is the way, but Joseph could have easily peeled off of that way and said, you know what? I'm looking to my brothers. It's their fault. It's Potiphar's fault. It's this fault. He wouldn't have been in the position he is here. And I'm not trying to tell you Joseph is in control. I'm trying to show you that we need to be on board God's plan in order to go where we want to go, I would hope, which is successful. We see it right here. It's successful. It's prosperous. So Joseph understood all these things. When you get your eyes on people, some of the nasty things they do towards you, when you do things to get back at that, when you do all those things like gossip, like talk about them, things that we say we have absolutely no business repeating, which causes actually other problems in other people's lives, not just the individuals involved. Where's the sovereignty of God in that moment it is what I'm trying to figure out. Where is the sovereignty of God? Look at Potiphar's wife who falsely accused Joseph. That's over and above gossip, right? Falsely accused. Did he look to her as the problem? As the injustice? No. What did he tell? What did he say? He didn't look to her. Actually, he didn't say a thing about it. There's going to be times when people are going to seem to be in control of your life. There's going to be times where you're going to look around and you're going to say, well, these people are controlling my life because why? Because you're allowing them to control your life. Remember, God shows us in his word that he wants to be in control of our life. He doesn't want you to relinquish that control to a person. He doesn't want you to do it. He wants you to maintain, give him the control because he is in control. And if we just give him that control in our personal lives, guess what? No person controls you. No person can control you. No one can affect the way what you do on a daily basis because why? Because they have their own problems to deal with. 
you have your own spiritual life to live, and you're heading the same way Joseph is. Every one of you are. You're heading in that direction, and if we stop and, and, and take a break on the side and start to repeat things that we shouldn't be repeating, well, guess what? We're not applying the things that we, we should be applying, in my opinion. So it's, it's very easy to get your eyes on people. Very, very easy. But it's not the correct option. It's not the correct option. Uh, so if you do that, I think you'll, you'll think or assume that they're in control. And the reason you assume that is because your eyes are not on the right thing. Uh, so don't fall for Satan's lies, all that means. We can easily fall for Satan's lies and deception versus falling for the applicational component of his truth. Look to Joseph and his life, right? There's a lot of things we can look to in Scripture uh, and, and apply those directly to our lives. So when you live that way, when you live by Satan's lie, what happens? You're controlled by Satan's lie. You're controlled by Satan's lie. And there's no other direction to go on that except living in the lie. And, and, and when people, or you assume people are controlling your life, guess what? That's a lie. It's a lie that you've fallen into. No one can control your life as an individual. We can allow people to control our lives. God, God is in control. Thank God. So don't ever think the sovereignty of God doesn't have application in your own personal day-to-day -day life because it does. I wanted to show you this because just, you know, just specifically in Joseph's, Joseph's case, in every, one of his, in every one of these problems that he had, it had to do with people talking. It had to do with people talking, right? There was always a problem with someone saying something. Of course, taking action is a part of that. But it started with uh, the, the talking aspect of this, right? So uh, I wanted to show you what problems that these things, or if we get caught up in this, the control that these things can have over our, over our lives. Very powerful. James 3.3 3 says, And if we put the bits into the horse's mouths so that they will obey us, we direct their entire body as well. Look at the ships. Also, though they are so great and are driven by strong winds, are still directed by a very small rudder, wherever the inclination of the pilot desires. Are you seeing the analogies here? We're talking about the tongue. We're talking about the tongue. James 3, 5. So also the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. See how great a forest is set flame by such a small fire? And the tongue is a fire. The very world of iniquity, the tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. That's pretty strong words right there. But you get the idea. We're given an example of a ship that is directed by a small rudder. I don't know if you ever looked at one of those big old merchant ships They're out of the water, those little bitty rudders. You're thinking, man, they, they need a bigger rudder. No, that's what directs the ship is that rudder. And look what we're applying that to or relating it to in the analogy here is the tongue. That's how much control and influence the tongue can have in this physical worldly arena. It controls circumstances. It can dictate. It can change. It can do all kind of things that we may not want it to do, right? Like hit an iceberg like the Titanic did. So I think you get the point and realize how dangerous what we can say and how that damage can spread like fire. It can spread like fire. And I'm, I'm human just like you're human. I've spread my own fires just like you've spread your own fires. But I'm bringing this up because this was an issue in Joseph's life, and it's sometimes an issue in our life. And when we get involved in that thing, the, the spreading of the fires, then the sovereignty of God goes right out the window. The sovereignty of God goes, at least in your own personal periphery, right? So I would say, watch your tongue. 
because you, you never know the damage you're going to bring to other people around you. You never know. And you never know what people that's going to affect because it will, it will affect people that you do not intend to affect with the fire you're spreading. People that you love, people that you desire to be around, people that you have influence over, that fire is going to spread around to them and it's going to cause issues. It's going to cause issues in their life. And that's the thing that we need to be aware of when we begin to naturally just throw that one match or that one cigarette out the, out the window and it burns thousands of acres. Thousands of acres. That's the tongue. That's what it does. It can burn a lot of acreage by doing that. So, but guess what? The fire or the person spreading the fire should never be the focus. They shouldn't be the focus. I'm talking about you as a, applicational in your life, personal. Those should not be the focus because when they are the focus, look who takes control. The fire and the person spreading the fire. But they're not in control. God's still just. God is still going to deal with the fire. He's going to put out the fire. But if Joseph would have looked to the fire and the person spreading the fire, he wouldn't have gotten to where he got. He put his trust in God and he, put, he knew that God had the fire extinguisher. He knew it. He said, okay, I know this is injustice after injustice after injustice, but I know who is just, and I know who one's going to fix all this mess that I've been put in by this person, that person, that person. A lot of people can put you into a lot of messes, and it, and it may not have anything to do with what you did or what you didn't do. That's not even an issue because we're talking about injustice, but we're also talking about God being in control over and above those injustices. That's the power that God wants you to see. Because when someone does something wrong to you and you did absolutely nothing, that's a hard test to pass. That's a hard test to pass because we can immediately get our eyes on people and not the sovereignty of God and say, they should have never done that. I didn't do anything to them. And we get our eyes on people and then we fail the test. That's why the test is in your life. You're at a position to pass the test. Let the fires spread or, or be started. You're in a position, if you're affected by the fire, you're in a position to pass the fire spreading test. You are. So don't focus on the people. Focus on the good that God is trying to show you within that fire. He's trying to show you some good. He's trying to get you to a new location. He's trying to show you that he's in control within the fire within the fire. So, and, and I think that's our application of the sovereignty of God. Even when the circumstances seem grim, they are constantly telling you to get your focus off God and blame the person. See how uh, uh, it's, it's just so easy to do. Just get your focus off God and blame the person. Because there's always a person behind every malicious and evil and, and unjust thing that happens to you. So it's easy to do that. It's always an option is what I'm telling you. It's always an option. But if we're going to rise above, uh, you know, the level that God wants us to be above, we can't look to those people. And just like Joseph did. And remember what happened to not just Joseph, but I'd almost say almost every believer in the Bible. They could have easily looked to people and failed the test over and over and over again. But God shows us both sides of that. He shows us success in people that, who looked to Him and trusted in Him, and He shows us people who did not. And He gives us a very clear delineation that there is a good way and a not so good way. So, and don't forget verses that will help you to immediately apply to your circumstances about the sovereignty of God. And we know that God calls us all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. You see that? That's an immediate application even within the midst of adversity, whatever you're experiencing in your life. This to me yells the sovereignty of God. God is in control. 
And there is good that he's working out together with those things that seem to be not so good in our opinion, but he's working them towards good. Maybe it takes a little bit of patience. Maybe it takes a little bit of faith that we have to trust in God and say, okay, God, you've got this. I'm going to step back and I'm going to just watch you because if I try to work it out, <laughs> bad day after bad day after bad day. Be why? Because we're not applying. We're, we're not trusting in the one that can fix the circumstances. Notice that Joseph made it a full circle from the fire spreading brothers who were jealous of him. And, and it came all the way back around. And by the way, jealousy is mostly the reason why fires are spread. Jealousy. Jealousy. That's why we as people spread fires is because we are jealous of individuals that we're spreading the fire against. Otherwise, we wouldn't spread the fire. We'd only spread good, you know, water and wind towards them. I don't know. Good things. <laughs> Not fire. Right? So, you get the idea, but Joseph went full circle. And, and what did Joseph do when he came all the way back around to the fire spreading brother? The tables had completely turned in multiple ways. He went from weakness and in his brother's strength, now he's in a position of strength and his brothers are in a position of weakness. See how funny God wor works those things out? He says, yeah, you were here. Now you're here. Now you have free reign to do whatever you want to him, right? But Joseph didn't do that. He wasn't there. God knew that he had the capacity to handle the level that God wanted to put him at. He knew he wouldn't harm his brothers. He, why? Because Joseph knew that wasn't the focus. He's like, that's not the focus. This is, we're talking about the plan of God here, guys. What I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, yeah, I know that happened. It's okay. It's all good. You're my brothers, and I'm going to help you. And that, that's really what he ended up doing, showing them grace. So he's in a different position. And I just wanted to back up two verses because it really, it's insightful to see what Joseph did, how he responded. Look at this. Now do not be grieved. This is talking to his brothers. Or angry with yourselves. Because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. To preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant in the earth, and to keep you alive by great deliverance. You know, Joseph took a great sacrifice just to deliver his own brothers. Kind of sounds like Jesus Christ. Great sacrifice to deliver the world. That's what Jesus did. I think this is a, showing us a, a kind of a very similar case. Sometimes we go through great sacrifice in our life just for the benefit of not just one person, but many people. Many people. And when God is going to put you in that position to affect many people, guess what? You're in that position for a reason, and it's not to be taken lightly. Joseph didn't take it lightly. God knew he would apply his word, and he said, guess what? He, look, look what he's doing to his brother. He's calming them. He's calming his brothers down because they're in a position where they're like, oh, gosh, he's going to kill us. They're, they're probably freaking out now because, they, you know, oh, no, here we go. What's he going to do? He's like, calm down. Don't, don't, be, don't be mad. Don't be grieved. Don't be angry. He's telling them, God put me here to preserve your life. Isn't that crazy? It's a full circle right back around to preserve the, the very lives that wanted to take yours. It all happened to Christ. Just in a lot more, uh, lot more people were involved, of course. So, and... Um, I think that's actually a, a pretty good place to stop. Um, I know I could go farther, but um, let's just stop there because I think that's a, a stomach full. My stomach's full from the word. Anyways, I hope yours is. And, but it's a topic that we can uh, definitely apply and definitely continue to apply because you know what? God is always in control. And even though you may experience things where you say, okay, God, you're not in control, it doesn't change the fact that he is. 
we just need to be realize, or realize, come to the realization and apply the word in such a way where we have the confidence understanding that God is in control and I need to glorify Him even though the circumstances tell me not to. And that's where we need to be, every one of us as believers. So keep that in mind, God is in control. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the, the grace that you continually give us and show us and provide us. And the words are always so timing and, and pertinent in our own personal lives. We know that these things aren't by accident. And we also trust that you will continue to guide us in a positive direction in our life, not in a negative not to continually do things that we shouldn't do, but to do things that glorify you. And we thank you so much for being able to do that and make the changes we need to make. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.